Well, hi, and good morning. Thank you for joining me in my shop on this. It's a gray, rainy day. Wow, I haven't seen a gray sky and rain coming out of it for almost six weeks, so uh, my grass is pretty excited, the part that's still alive. Anyway, so um, this video is just a wee bit different from how I usually do things. Usually I video everything I do as I do it, but I thought this morning I would go ahead and check some resistors in here and uh, and then just report what I found. It's a little boring watching me try to sort my way through a schematic. Although, in fact, something interesting did happen. Nothing to do with the resistors in here. Uh, so I made a little table here, which is not really coming through on camera. Just wrote down some of the resistances right around the magic eye, because I'm still focused on why is the magic eye so weak. And, and probably the correct answer is because the tube is worn out. That's probably the answer, but I'm trying to double check for any other reason why it might be showing uh, weak. And I hadn't turned on the set yet. Um, I've been doing this with the set turned off, just reading resistances. So the resistors I checked all turned out to be really very, very close. 15K is actually 15.1. 20K is actually 19.5. 50K is actually 51. 500 is actually 530. There's really there's really nothing going on here. I also poked around with a few other resistors. I don't know where they were in the circuit, but I just measured them because I could see them. And everything checks out okay on the uh, resistors that I've checked. But what was interesting was when I was studying the schematic. So let's just go and take a look at the schematic. Yeah, I think on the last video for a while I was showing the schematic here and my cursor was not appearing on it. But, uh, okay, so uh, where well, magic eye, where to go? Magic eye. Where did you go here? Hang on one sec. Here we go. Okay, so here's the magic eye. And here's the various resistors. The 1 million I checked, which is about 1.1, 1.15, something like that. I mean, I'm going to change this out probably for what it's worth. But I've checked these guys, this voltage divider here, make sure it's ratio is proper. And I checked this one over here. Uh, all these resistors are checking out fine. A few things I noticed. On the schematic is the uh, the battery here, which I have an improper battery. This should be a, a 1.2 volt battery, something in that range, and I've got a I've got a 3 volt battery sitting here, pushing a little too hard on it. Look at that. The positive side is pushing this grid positive, but then it's in a circuit which is pushed negative by the uh, AVC development here. So then you go negative 6 volts up back up. 3 volts, so you're getting something like minus 3 volts. This is still negative down here. I thought that was kind of interesting. So maybe maybe this is causing the problem. I got too much battery power here. Um, I don't think so, I, because I don't think this is going to affect the brightness. This will affect the action in the tube, but not so much the brightness. So as I say, I haven't operated the set. So I started just working my way back, looking for other unusual things, and all of a sudden my eye caught this thing. What is this thing? So, coil here, T8. What's going on here with this? So when I look into this, uh, this revealed a couple things. Number one, this is not the right schematic. I almost fell off my chair when I realized that. I'm looking at the wrong schematic. What this is, is a gas tube. There's no heater in here. It's just a tube of gas, like a gigantic neon bulb, if you like. But it's not neon that's in here. And the purpose of this is to uh, fix the voltage at this point. So it, these tubes have a breakdown voltage which is very, very um, reliable. And this thing says 125 volts here, so maybe this breaks down at 125. I thought it was more like 90 or something. But in any case, the idea is if the voltage rises above the rating of this tube, then the tube begins to conduct current, and the extra current pulls down the voltage here, and you end up right back where you actually started from. It's a little like a dam on the river, and the river rises, rises. If the river rises above the dam, the excess water just pours over the dam. So you can think of this thing like a dam. The problem is, there's not one of these in this radio. This this tube is missing in the radio. Um, and that's when I realized, holy smokes, I haven't got the right schematic here. And it's very, very close. I don't, I don't doubt that it's very, very close, but it's not exactly correct. So I went off hunting, 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 and I found this one. 
this one I believe is the correct schematic I cannot relate any of the numbers or names or anything down here directly to the radio but sure looks like the right one to me so we just zoom back in here I, I've looked this over the actual circuitry is very very similar the layout of the schematic is quite different but actual circuitry is really pretty much identical but if you notice there's no voltage controlling tube in here that's gone uh, otherwise I think it's pretty much the same the same radio I think I mean I didn't compare every last little thing here uh, but I did look around the 6x6 which is now over here on the schematic you get the same resistors 15 and 20 1 million here same sort of stuff there's the battery right to the grid same kind of stuff just the arrangement up through here is a little different too so hmm, good thing I found this uh, it's always helpful to be using the correct schematic I think the antenna input was quite different in this radio from the last one. <laughs> Excuse me, let's take a peek here. Well, here they're showing the terminal strip on the back to make a connection. 10,000 ohm resistor to ground. That exists in the radio I'm, I'm working on. Here it is here. So I really think these are really pretty similar. Just a slight difference. Maybe it all amounts to is that uh, voltage regulator. Uh, two, maybe. Not sure. So, the bottom line though is that I've checked the resistors that can affect the operation of this tube. There's nothing funny going on. So, the next thing is to operate the set, read the actual voltages on here, and then uh, compare them to what they should be. And in particular, the plate, the, particularly either side of this 1 million actually. Because the plate voltage is coming here okay just a little bit of quiet thinking there let's uh, let's see if we can't get this guy going now I have the speaker plugged in if no antenna connected uh, my objective here is to read some voltages uh, at the end of the wires that go to the magic eye in particular up here where the resistor is that's really my aim now always a little nervous first time plugging things back in I don't have the magic eye plugged in huh. oh boy stick it in that socket and I won't want to pull it out again why would I why would I not plug in the magic eye at this point and there's a good reason for plugging it in because it's gonna draw some current and affect some of the voltages that I'm gonna read kinda crazy to test for it without it in there well, once I shove it in that socket, I'm not going to want to pull it out again. It's going in and not coming out. I'm going to need it in there, obviously, because I'm going to have to look for, uh, you know, how bright it is and all this kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm going to stick it back in here. Just move a few crowded items out of the way. And wouldn't you know it, with a radio with all this open space. Oh my gosh, you can practically park a car in here. Half the resistors I was trying to test are all tucked way up in behind here. Is that in? That doesn't look in. Don't present me with a new problem here. Get it out, he can't get it in. <clears throat> man, man, oh man. Once in a while, my imagination runs to uh, gee, what happens if I'm pushing on this tube and the glass shatters? Oh, that's a scary thought, man. It really <laughs> makes me very uncomfortable pushing on these things. And that's a good way to be. Holy smokes, it just will not go in there. Well, maybe that's far enough. I mean, let me not... Let's just leave it like that. Maybe that's far enough to make contact in there. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me again. 
I think everything is ready to go. I don't know what band we're on, but I don't think it matters too much right now. Just a second. side just before I turn it on. Uh, volume controls. Get out of there. Volume's turned down right now. Okie dokie. Okay, nervous as I am doing this. I just it's just it's just I don't know why. Why should I be nervous? I've done this a million times. Okay, maybe not a million. There we go. Perfect. My dim bulbs just glowing a little bit. They're glowing about the same as that uh, last Pi record player. Isn't that interesting. It's drawing less power than the Pi record player right now. I'm just watching the lights to see them uh, come up a bit. 90, 95 volts is the actual supply voltage, 96, I'm waiting for it to go down. The tubes warm up, they start drawing current, pull down a bit. Well, it's just sitting there at 96. Oh, I hear a little bit. Coming out of the speaker. Hoping for a little bit of a radio sound of some some sort, but not so. Okay, let's get the voltmeter going here. I am on restricted power. I'll change that in a moment. Okay, let's uh, let's clip. Uh, oh, first let's go across the resistor. What is dropping on this resistor? 99 volts, 100 volts. Oh, that's just about all there is, isn't it? Let's see, to so the chassis, 15 volts on one side. Now that's gotta be just about the entire, let's see, here's the high voltage. So all the high voltage is appearing on one side, and what's left on the other, next to nothing. 15, that doesn't seem right at all. That does not seem right at all. Now, I see the tube is warmed up, so it actually did make contact. I don't want to touch it, but the, the tube is over there. I can see the heater is warmed up. Well, I think we already found something kind of weird far side of that resistor, showing almost nothing. You can actually see the wire that's going right up to the magic eye. Now I did replace a resistor back in here. Just look at that again, because I'm a little taken aback by it. It's 100 volts dropping across it. So just about everything is dropping across that resistor. I don't think that's right. It is a million ohms. It doesn't take much current to do that. Uh, let's see if I can get a camera on the eye. Can I get a camera? A camera on the eye. I, I just don't want to swing it around. Who knows how well it's plugged in. Anything green there. <laughs> yeah, I can see a little bit of green there, just just a wee bit. So the whole tube is functioning. Not functioning very well. You know what? It could be something to do with this uh, resistor. 
even though I measured it correctly, maybe it's not. Uh, maybe something funny happens when you try to run current through it. I don't know. Um, for sure, I should change out that resistor though and eliminate that as a potential problem. It's so easy to do. Um, now, let's put it on full, full blast here. See what happens. Okay, so you see, that gets a fair bit brighter now. The drop on that resistor is over 200 volts now. So 222 volts are dropping on that resistor right now. One side to ground is 20 volts and the other side is 250. Without doing any more, I think I'm just going to change that resistor. I've got to do it anyway. Let's let's do it. Let's do it now. Shut this guy off, and uh, we'll change it with the uh, required one million. One million. Okay, so I have my new one mega ohm resistor hooked up. Look at how accurate this thing is. I can't believe it. A resistor. That's amazing. Eh? One mega ohm down to that many decimal places. So this thing's still jumping around a bit. It must be the meter. It can't be the component. So I'm not going to worry about it at all. I will put in the uh, resistor here. Maybe I'll just leave the camera rolling while I do this. Flip on my soldering iron. Make sure everything's switched off. chat here while I'm doing this. One of the things the Canadian government is working on right now is trying to find some place to uh, do some peacekeeping. Um, you know, in the, in the mind of a Canadian, most Canadians anyway, we have a long history and uh, proud history of being involved in peacekeeping. You know, peacekeeping is where two nations have uh, been uh, warring and they've reached some kind of settlement. And once there's a settlement, uh, third parties can come in and hold each of the combatants to the settlement. They basically police the agreement. And basically, you do that for a length of time, and uh, so the societies will hopefully, the nations will hopefully uh, settle down and, and relax and finally get used to each other again as neighbors or whatever it is that's going on between them. Uh, Canadians really love this kind of thing. We love to think we're involved in that, keeping the peace. So that's one of the things the Canadian government government's doing. Our Minister of Defense is touring, literally touring Africa, going to different uh, trouble areas, uh, trying to find one that might suit Canada's capabilities and where some help is needed and I, I'm sure want it also. I mean, you can't... Peacekeeping is not about... Well, there is some force involved, but it's not about forcing two warring parties to settle. They settle first. Uh, and, you know, peacekeeping is to keep the peace. That's literally what it is. Now, I know there's been some examples where this peacekeeping thing has gone on essentially just... it just become part of the fabric of of the two disagreeing nations and it goes on for decades sometimes. It's kind of crummy. Uh, but that's what Canada is up to. It's one of the things Canada is up to. Okay, so now I have a new one million ohm resistor in there. What difference is that going to make? I don't think it's going to make Hill of beans difference here, but good. Okay. 
Let's fire it up again. Everything looks the same as it was. There we go. In the meantime, I'll try and get my my eye camera just a wee bit better here. Okay, I can hear the hum. Turn down some light here. Okay, so there it is. Let me put her up on full power again. Seem a little brighter? Hard to say, those cameras fool you like crazy with their automatic adjustments for brightness and that. So I am going to grab this light, or grab the uh, tube, and take a look at it with my eyeballs. Well, you know, maybe it is a wee bit brighter. Um, maybe it is. Don't know what else I can do about it, frankly, at this point. So we're going to leave that for now. Um, and I'm going to carry on with three other problems. Uh, can I remember them all? One of them is the hum we can hear. Another one is uh, the batteries I put in. And I hadn't mentioned that before. I put these two inappropriate batteries because it's what I had in my in my shop to experiment with. So I got the wrong size batteries in here. And that could even be affecting the, uh, the eye. What if I short, what if I uh, pull a battery out of there? Just yank it out. Just take it right out of there. Uh, I think this is the battery that affects the eye here, actually. Uh, change the bias of, uh, of of not only the eye tube. Okay, so I'm going to shut the power off briefly. Pull the battery out of there again just because I'm a chicken to do it live. I don't think there's anything here really to be afraid of. Famous last words. Pull that out. Okay, so now there's basically an open circuit there. It's not really the best deal either, but let's see what happens with the eye. Fiddling around here. This is partial power to full power. There's funny little pops in it there. I don't think it's any different. Okay, now I will short where the battery was. Short out where the battery was. Oh. Okay, a little noisy there. Turn down the volume. Still noisy. Here we go. Well, you can see it's some brief changes in the brightness, but it doesn't hold. It sort of pops brighter for just a fraction there and then hold and goes down. So is this battery really significant in the scheme of things? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So, I will have to get some more appropriate batteries though, uh, these guys here. Yeah, 3 volts, this is a CR2032 battery, 3 volts, too much. Okay, uh, now, carry on with the hum at this point. Okay, so I think I'm going to do something else first. <laughs> um, this little cover here is covering uh, what I think is just a coil and a capacitor hidden away in here. And these wires uh, are really shot. And when I look more closely, they are really shot right where they go into this box. It could be a short here. It could be a short on the antenna lines. That would explain something. I have to change these wires anyway. I mean, look at them. They're, they're shot. So I'm going to take this off, which I've never done one of these, I don't think. quite see how to do it. These uh, screws here. Okay, so this screw must be holding something inside. There's, there's two wires coming out the back here. 
these two here. Um, wow, man, that's kind of weird looking out. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, well, let's just loosen off these and see what happens. They're just machine screws. It's also kind of weird that there's two wires coming out. When I look at the schematic, you can easily see that there should be an antenna wire coming out, but you cannot see where this other wire, why this other wire should be coming out. You can guess it, you know, one's antenna, one's a earth ground. It doesn't actually work well with the schematic again. It's loose enough, I just took it off with my fingers. So these, these wires are strain relieved with a knot just on the other side here. But what's actually holding this from coming out... Wow, I think it's these wires. Okay, let's snip them away. I snip them flush, they should just retract into this can. here and a little coil back there oh okay so one of the wires actually doesn't even connect to here okay so that makes sense now with the schematic so one wire is just coming out of the radio and that's almost certainly the chassis ground wire I'm looking for it Yes, absolutely. So that's all that is, just a chassis ground wire. The interesting one is this one. This is the antenna wire. Wow, there's a lot of wire tucked in there. Why would they tuck so much wire in there? Maybe to allow the making of the knot. This is just going to break off, I'm pretty sure. I'm not going to break off. And this this wire really, uh, why why would they bring it out through this in such an awkward way? Uh, you know, it's just a chassis. It's just a connection to the chassis. Just because they, I don't know, just to make this thing look symmetrical, that doesn't make sense. They wanted that wire passing through this little can. Why, why would they care about that? Quick, to the schematic. 
So here we are on the antenna. Here's the can right here. Just trying to make sure my uh, I'm not sure my cursor is visible, so I hope I hope it is. But uh, on the left side, uh, where you can see the antenna symbol, right below it is the capacitor and a coil, and that's what's inside that can. You can see the antenna wire sticks out the top, and the other wire. Hey, just got an idea. Um, no, just kidding. I got no ideas. Um, why am I having trouble understanding this? There is another wire that comes out. But it doesn't tie to ground. It goes to the 10,000 10, resistor. What are you showing me here? Yeah, right, there is, of course, it's the, it's the continuation of the antenna wire on the other side of the... Right, okay, I'm just not thinking well. Ooh, that looks like it's adjustable. No, that's just holding, that's holding the coil form. That's all that is. Uh, so that goldy colored wire is the one that just continues. So what's happening here on the schematic is the black wire is not showing up at all. The, the ground wire here. It's just not showing up on the schematic at all. Okay. I think I got it. Now, any reason to doubt this capacitor? I don't think so. These are very, very reliable. Made in USA. Elmenco. Ah, I wonder if that was made in Mexico. Elmenco. I don't know. Were they making these kinds of parts in Mexico back then? Wait, but how can it be Mexico when it says made in the USA? Huh. Okay. Oh, so many things. So many things to ponder. Wow. Um, so all it really amounts to is me soldering a new wire on. This ground wire, cheaper I can, I can, I can do something different with that. It just comes in the radio here, gets down in behind this plate, comes down and loops around that loopy part right here, and goes right to the chassis there. So I don't know why they feed it out of this. spot. Um, you got me, okay? I, and maybe there's no good reason. Maybe there's no particular reason at all, and I should stop thinking about it. And I'm just worried I'm missing something. I'm overlooking something. You know, something like that. Okay. Just a matter of putting a wire on. Okay, so you can see where I have the other camera position looking down at it, and this is what you see with it. And uh, I've got the, what is going to be the antenna wire waiting to be soldered here, and I've got the ground wire here. Get some more slack here. Which I'm just going to connect there, and then put some shrink sleeve on it. I decided that, you know, even though I don't understand why the radio was built the way it's built with this ground wire coming out here, uh, I'm not going to change it. Just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I should doubt it. For all I know, Rogers had four engineering meetings on this topic right here. <laughs> how to deal with the ground wire <laughs> coming out of the radio. Who knows, right? If you uh, assume, you know, 
one design engineer did all this on his own without any discussions with anybody, well, that's not very likely at all. A large organization like this, every time they go to make a move, there's issues about materials and all kinds of stuff. So, decisions aren't made in a vacuum, even these little tiny ones here. You got a better view than me now. Okay, I think that's I think that's gotta be. That's gotta be. Just give the microphone a little punch there. Okay, now we got a oh shrink sleeve, right, right, shrink sleeve. This might stiffen things up in here quite a bit, but I, I'm hoping not. Come on, over you go. Why well, barely I don't really even have to shrink that really. It's not gonna go anywhere. lock it down. I just use my soldering iron to shrink it a bit. There's no chance of that moving now. Probably deposited a little bit of solder on the outside of that, but I don't think that matters. Now, Slide this guy back on. Let's see, the receiving holes are here. This is actually supposed to be probably around this way. Hm. Oh my gosh, this is supposed to, this little hole. Uh, Jam it on at this point. Just jam it on there. How am I going to know if I shorted this thing out? Here. Wow, what is holding it back? That's not too good. Something going wrong inside there? Who knows? Okay, and I'll just 
screw that back in place. The wonderful Roberts screwdriver. Funny that they positioned these. Well, you know, they're just using the rivet hole, aren't they? They're using the rivet hole to push the wire through, but that ends up the wire lining up with the screw here. Have to write them a letter and tell them they, they could have made some better design choices here on this radio. Imagine how exciting it was designing this kind of stuff. You got the latest tubes, especially if you're working for this company, big company. Be all kinds of smart engineers around. Very exciting, I would think. There it is, I think. I think I succeeded with that. <laughs> wasn't too tough. And now I got this gigantic piece of wire coming off of it. So I'm going to leave gigantic right now. I really don't know where exactly these wires were going. Um, maybe on the cabinet there's some terminal posts. I don't know. I don't know. So I know where they're going now. They're going into my scrap bin. And there they go. Okay, now we're back to what were we gonna do? We're gonna operate this thing, but I'm afraid it's 10.30 in the morning. I've gotta attend to other matters, so we'll leave it at that. And uh, next stage will be, I think maybe trying to deal with these batteries. I gotta get some more batteries. To go to the battery store. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, see you on the next video.